over nine on three, similar to his buddy Caleb Loeb, and four, good gosh, four for 20 from the field. Yikes. When Withers shot that three-pointer for North Carolina at the end of the game, I couldn't believe it because I'm pretty sure without even looking it up, he shoots 20% from the three-point line. And I almost thought about saying Alabama has no shot of beating North Carolina, but I'll give them a 2% mm, chance of winning that game. Alabama simply doesn't even have the athletes to compete with North Carolina, and that's the cold, harsh truth. And I'll go as far as saying this. I'd be shocked if Alabama kept it within 10 points. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, last night was the first night of the March Madness Week 16, and it did not disappoint. We had some really good games outside of, of course, UConn just completely destroying anyone and anybody that gets in their way. I've never seen anything like this at the collegiate level. They are literally beating the crap out of every single team in their way, and dating back to last year's March Madness, they have won every single game, I think it's something by like, 13 points or more. It's to the point where if a team can even compete, I'm not even talking about winning the dang game, but if they can just compete with UConn, I'd be shocked. I digress, so we'll get to that a little later in our video, and obviously, I think the main topic of last night was no other than North Carolina losing to Alabama. We're going to talk all about that because I stated Alabama had, what was it, only about a 2% chance to beat North Carolina, and also, we got to talk about RJ Davis and Caleb Love, and there's not an easy way to say this. They straight up sucked. And to tell you the truth, I'm not shocked about Caleb Love having a typical Caleb Love performance, but the RJ Davis one, that caught me by surprise. I've seen Caleb Love hit some cold spurts because Caleb Love, he's either hot or he's not. No in-betweens. He either has a great game or a bad game. But RJ Davis, he's been relatively consistent. And for him to go out there against Alabama, one of the worst defensive teams in the nation and currently one of the worst defensive teams in March Madness and lay a complete egg... I didn't see it coming. But yeah, we're going to talk all about that, and we're not doing no intro, none of that. I don't got time to waste. You don't got time to waste either. It's relatively simple. If you like basketball content, videos like this, consider subscribing to the channel and joining our community. We love to have you here. If you don't want to join, that's cool too, but let's get into it. Let's pull up this Clemson versus Arizona box where I wonder what Caleb Loeb wound up. Okay, he finished the game going 5 for 18, which is what it is. I've seen him have shooting nights like that before, but the glaring thing that sticks out to me is the 0 for 9 on three-pointers. That's atrocious. That's just not going to get the job done. And now that I'm looking at some of these other stats from the guard play, outside of Jaden Bradley, nobody did that good. And ironically enough, Jaden Bradley is the former Alabama point guard who transferred in. And we'll talk about Alabama in just a second. And I could go on and on about Arizona, but to me... I think the headline should be, hey, Clemson's the real deal. They're legit. And I've known since day one they were legit. And matter of fact, I picked them to get to the Elite Eight in my bracket. I've been high on Clemson all year long. They're a solid defensive team, and their big guys, P.J. Hall and Shefflin, they go off. We'll talk more about Caleb Love and Clemson in just a second. Let's get to this Alabama game, though, because I have a lot to say. Well, first things first. In a video we uploaded a couple days ago, one of you asked me, hey, Matt, how do you feel about Alabama's chances of winning the NCAA tournament? And I took it a step farther. I said they have 0% chance of winning the tournament, and against North Carolina, I think they only got a 2% chance to win that game. I stated it word for word. I thought North Carolina had too much talent for Alabama, and Alabama would be lucky to just compete in the game. But Alabama, they turned it on, and they proved me wrong. And I can't tell you enough how happy I am they proved me wrong, because... For those of you who don't know, I'm an Alabama basketball fan. And it's funny because you guys were blowing me up on Twitter because I was celebrating the win and everybody's like, well, Matt, you doubted us. And I'm not denying that claim because you're 100% right. Yes, I did doubt Alabama. But you got to understand, that's me being the college basketball analyst first and being an Alabama basketball fan second. And that's what I always strive to do. I've said this for years now regarding college football because you know that's what we like to cover. Number one, I'm a college football fan slash analyst first. Then, number two, I'm an Alabama fan. I have to evaluate and analyze things how I see them. I try not to let being an Alabama fan get in the way of that. And here's why I haven't been too high on Alabama basketball to give you a better perspective. Because the casuals that are just tuning into March Madness, you're probably like, well, dang, why is Matt not high on this Bama basketball team? Because they look outstanding in March Madness, and they do. But here's the kicker at this. All throughout the regular season, they haven't looked this way. Especially at the end there, Alabama gave up 120 to Kentucky, and they gave up 100 to Florida, not once, but twice. To go on top of that, one of my bigger concerns with this Alabama basketball team is we lack size, and we can't rebound too good, and we don't even have a true big man. I want y'all to think about this, and y'all know his name by now. Grant Nelson is our center, pretty much. We've had to put him there just due to injuries and stuff going on. Grant Nelson is only roughly 6'10". I don't even buy that. I think he's more so 6'9". 
His true position is a small forward. He shouldn't be playing center, but he is. So when you take everything into account, we're not a good rebounding team, we lack size, we lack depth, and we're one of the worst defensive teams in all of March Madness, it's not a recipe for success, at least not in my book. And I tell you this much, if Alabama played North Carolina tomorrow night, you know who I'm picking to win that game? North Carolina. But here's what's been the biggest X factor for Alabama in this March Madness. It hasn't been Grant Nelson going off last night, Mark Sears, etc. It's been the defensive side of the floor. They have turned up the intensity and effort. Alabama has been playing really hard on defense, and it's a night and day difference from the end of the regular season to the March Madness. And while I'm thinking about it, let me pull up the box score here. I don't even know what R.J. Davis wound up going, but I'm pretty sure he went 0 for 9 on threes. Hold on, pulling it up right here. Yeah, 0 for 9 on threes, similar to his buddy Caleb Loeb, and 4, good gosh, 4 for 20 from the field. Yikes. Outside of that, though, everyone else on North Carolina did good. In the first half, North Carolina hit 10 three-pointers. You had Cadeau and what was it? What was the other guy's name? Is it? Oh, yeah, Seth Tremble. They went four for four on threes in the first, or they hit their first four threes because that Nate Oates was like, oh, well, they can't shoot, so we're going to let them shoot, and they made us pay for it. In the first half, I believe North Carolina had 54 points. They finished the game with 87. Doing some quick math here. That means North Carolina only had 33 in the second half, so Alabama shut them down. It did help that R.J. Davis couldn't throw the ball in the ocean if he wanted to last night, but I think you got to give some of that credit to Alabama and Rylan Griffin for locking them down. Looking at Alabama's box score here, it took an almighty effort from everybody. Estrada, 9 for 17, played out of his mind. Griffin, 6 for 12, 5 for 8 on threes. Mark Sears, he's Mark Sears. You know what he's about. Grant Nelson, I haven't got to talk about him. He went off. And Nick Pringle. I love Nick Pringle, man. Off the bench, Alabama didn't get much of anything. Diabate, he had two points. And then Sammy Walters, he only had five. But he did have that clutch three. If you do want to nitpick here, though, I think the game-changing play or the game-losing play, I guess you shall say, is North Carolina. They're up 85-84. to 84. They kick it to Withers and... He's not even a great three-point shooter in the first place, but he takes a three. He was wide open, but that's not the shot you want. And I tell you straight up, as an Alabama fan, when I saw him shoot that, I was like, yes, please shoot a three. And he did it, and <laughs> yeah, you saw what happened next. We get the rebound, go down, and he's the same player, I believe, who fouled Grant Nelson on the N1. When Withers shot that three-pointer for North Carolina at the end of the game, I couldn't believe it because I'm pretty sure without even looking it up, he shoots 20% from the three-point line. And it was such a weird game watching it because Alabama didn't have a player that could stop Armando Baycott. To me, I thought North Carolina would have been better off throwing the ball inside to Armando Baycott every single possession, just getting an inside touch, then kicking it out to the shooters, but they were playing the opposite. It almost seemed like Armando Baycott was a second or third option, and the first option for Carolina was jack up a bunch of threes, and in the first half when you're making them, hey, it looks great, but in the second half, when you're not making them, you saw what happened. It looks terrible. I could talk about that game for the next 20 minutes because that is the biggest win, arguably, in Alabama's basketball history. One more win, and they get to their first Final Four, and they're matching up with Clemson tomorrow night. I'm not going to talk too much about this Illinois-Iowa State game because it went how I expected. Nothing too exciting there. And Terrence Shannon Jr., he had a typical Terrence Shannon Jr. performance. He, I think he's easily the best player in all of the country. It's not even close. And I currently... I predicted Illinois to win it, and I'm still feeling pretty good about that. And I know what some of you are saying. Matt, you think Illinois is going to beat UConn? And yes. Yes, I do. In my current March Madness bracket, I have Illinois and UConn matching up, and I have Illinois winning that game and winning the entire tournament. Speaking of UConn, though, we'll end off the video here. I don't think that game against San Diego State, it's getting enough recognition. That is a rematch game from last year's national championship, and I know San Diego State lost some players, but... So did UConn. UConn lost three major and key players just off the top of my head from that team last year, and they beat a team that made it to the championship by 30 points. And as dominant as UConn was last year, you can make the case and argument that they're more dominant this year. UConn's on a whole nother level. They're on a new planet compared to everybody else. I can't remember the last time a team in March Madness in basketball has been this dominant. College football is very different because not any team can win on any day. For example, Chattanooga State Water Aquarium Community College could play Alabama 100 times in football, and they would not beat them a single time. They'd lose 100 times. But if Chattanooga State Water Aquarium Community College played Alabama basketball 100 times, they could sneak out three or four wins. And the reason for that is because teams like Alabama and Georgia in football, 
they can get all these six foot eight monsters, but your smaller colleges, they can't. On the flip side in basketball, getting a six foot eight monster doesn't necessarily mean you have an advantage because you can't just tackle people, okay? You gotta be a skilled player. I say all that to say this. Basketball is a hard sport to win consecutive games in. And UConn isn't just winning consecutive games, they're winning consecutive games in March Madness against top tier teams and they're destroying them to go on top of that. To me, and this is just me, they look unbeatable. And I know that's kind of hypocritical because some of you might bring up, well, Matt, you just said you got Illinois beating them, and that's because UConn doesn't have a Terrence Shannon Jr. And Illinois beating UConn, that is one of my big-time upsets, and you got to pick some upsets here and there. There's many more things I could say. I've been enjoying these March Madness games. Can't wait for tonight's games. I'm trying to get this video up as early as I can. Let me know your thoughts down below. But there will be.